Hello, this video is on hypothesis testing, specifically on the t-test, testing a population mean, as shown here in the syllabus. A t-test is a hypothesis test that can be used to test whether a population mean has changed from a previously known value. Note that a t-test is only valid if the distribution of the underlying population is normal. In a one-tailed hypothesis test, the alternative hypothesis specifies whether the population mean has specifically increased or decreased. Whereas in a two-tailed hypothesis test, the alternative hypothesis states that the population mean has, has changed. In other words, it, it's no longer what it was before. The basic steps of a t-test are step one, to state the null and alternative hypotheses, and that could be a one or a two-tailed alternative hypothesis. Step two, to collect sample data and calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation. Step three, to state the significance level. Step four, to calculate the value of the test statistic and the p-value. Step five, to state the acceptance and rejection criteria, and step six, to draw or make a conclusion, either using the test statistic or the p-value. When testing a population mean, the null hypothesis, H0, assumes that the original value of the mean to be true. And the alternative hypothesis, H1, will either be that the mean has decreased, that would be a one-tailed test, or that the population mean has increased, Again, a one-tailed test. Or that the population mean has changed. That would be a two-tailed test. For example, a manufacturer of an insect repellent might claim that on average their new product is effective for longer than six hours. So performing a t-test to test this hypothesis, the null hypothesis, H0, would be that the population mean is six hours, i.e. the average effectiveness of the repellent is six hours. And the alternative hypothesis, H1, would be that the mean is greater than six hours. In other words, a one-tailed test, stating that the average effectiveness of the repellent is more than six hours. Sample data needs to be collected to test the hypothesis. And the sample data can either be entered into the calculator as a list, or it can be entered using summary values. The sample mean and the sample standard deviation. In the example, a random sample of 50 bottles of the new product was taken and the sample mean was found to be 6.12 hours and the sample standard deviation 0.25 hours. The significance level determines the threshold for making a decision. In other words, it sets the critical value. And you will be told what significance level to use in the question. It will either be set at 1, 5 or 10 percent. The calculation for the test st statistic is shown here. However, you do not need to know this formula for the uh, applications and interpretation course. I've only included it here in case you decide to use a t-test in your internal assessment. To test the population mean, from the main menu, if we select statistics and press F6, and F4 to delete the contents of the lists, confirming with F1 and scrolling across and repeating that for other lists, F4 and F1. Then you're ready to enter the data into list one. Once the data is entered, you press F6 twice to get back to the main statistics menu and press F3 for a test, and F2 for a t-test and F1 for a one sample test. If you have entered the data into list one, you would then select data as list by pressing F1. Alternatively, if the sample data is given in summary form with a sample mean and a sample standard deviation, you would press F2, setting data to variable. Then scrolling down and setting the null hypothesis. In our example, that was equal to six. Press enter. 
and then scroll back up to set the alternative hypothesis. In the example, it was greater than 6, so press in F3 for greater than. And then scrolling down and setting the summary values. The sample mean in the example was 6.12. The sample standard deviation in the example was 0 0.25. And the sample size was 50. And then pressing execute to perform the test. And then writing down the test statistic and the p-value correct to three significant figures, as shown here. Reminding you of the acceptance and rejection criteria, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, or if the p-value is less than the significance level, then there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, H0. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis. If we accept the null hypothesis, we would state that there is sufficient evidence at the given significance level to suggest that the population mean is what it was. If the conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis, H0, then we would state that there is sufficient evidence at the given significance level to suggest that the population mean is less than or greater than or not equal to what it was depending on which tail test was performed. So in the example, testing at a 1% level of significance, we can see that the p-value is less than the significance level. So we reject the null hypothesis, H0. And our conclusion is that there is sufficient evidence at the 1% significance level to suggest that the effectiveness of the new insect repellent product is more than six hours.